everyone so here I am filming my intro for like the seventh time I don't know why my intros for this video are just sucking really bad I'm just going to try to get right to the point in this video today we're going to be doing two things one of which is slightly controversial and by slightly I mean it's very controversial one of the things we're going to be doing in this video is talking about why I am personally choosing to get my dog from a breeder rather than going to a shelter or adopting one the other thing that we're going to be doing is taking a look at the supplies that I've gotten for my dog so far which is some of the stuff that you see behind me there's treats all over the table that said we're going to go ahead and just do kind of the haul first and show you guys what I got to prepare for my dog and then we will get into the discussion Misty wants the treats hi <laughs> Right, bye. So if you guys don't really care about seeing the haul and everything that I bought for my dog and you guys just want to get into the discussion, I will put a timestamp on the screen here so that you can skip to that time. This video is probably going to be pretty long, I will warn you. All of that said, I guess we can just kind of get into the video now. Hi. What are you doing? What are you doing, Misty? Being bad? You being bad? <laughs> Before we really get into this, I should probably kind of explain what's going on. A lot of you guys probably have no idea, but I am in fact getting a dog. I have mentioned it a few times on my channel and I've mentioned it quite a bit on Instagram and Twitter, so a lot of you guys probably know, but a lot of you guys probably don't. So for those of you who don't know, I am getting a dog and I'm getting a Samoid puppy. I should be getting her sometime in January. I've had a reserve since the summertime, so this is something I've been planning on for quite a while now. Hi Misty, are you having fun? Misty is having a lot of fun. What a cat sounds like at three o'clock in the morning. So yes, I have been planning on getting this dog for a while now, so I've been doing a lot of preparation over the last few months. Let's just get on into it. I Okay, let, let's get into it. Now before we do that, I wanna give just a little bit of backstory on my puppy. So my dog, her name is Alaska and she is a Samoyed puppy. So Alaska is a Samoyed puppy and she was born on November 12th. So as of right now, she's a little bit over a week old. I think we're approaching 10 days. What is the date today? Yeah, so it's the 23rd now. So she is just over 10 days old. So that said, let's start looking at everything I purchased so far. So the first thing I got are just some stainless steel um, dishes. So one will be a food dish and one will be a water dish. Pretty simple. I like using these dishes for my pets. They're easy to clean and I don't know, I just like these dishes, so two dishes. Then I bought a few tennis balls. Now these are tennis balls um, specifically made for dogs because I know human tennis balls aren't really the best for them because there are sometimes like different chemicals in them. So these are dog tennis balls, got three of these. I also do want to point out, I know some people have different opinions on like certain dog toys, like are these good, are they bad? To me, I think it kind of just depends, you know, like on the individual dog, what their tendencies are like. So it's important to supervise your dog with any toys to make sure um, that this is safe for them to use and like, you know, never leave them unattended with a toy. So that's the plan, so. Anyways, tennis balls. Then I have a few different rope toys. So I'm gonna put a few of them down and just kind of talk about these in particular. So rope toys are one of those ones that can be fairly controversial because there is the issue of if the dogs ingest the little fibers in them, they can get like wrapped up in their intestines and stomach and whatnot, which is obviously not good. So however, these are not actually made of rope. So these are actually made of hemp. So it's actually a natural fiber where if a dog does ingest it, it it breaks down, like they can digest it. So the fibers aren't going to string around their insides or anything like that, string around their teeth. So these, the hemp fibers break down. So from everything I gathered, these are a safe alternative to rope toys. So I got this one and then I got this one and then I got this one. Then I got this fleece bone here. It does have a squeaker inside. Um, again, obviously monitor all toys because if you have a toy that is like stuffed or has a squeaker inside, you wanna make sure your dog isn't like ripping it open and eating it. So will be monitored, but I got her this. I don't know, I just thought it was kind of cute and simple. So this here is a little skunk toy. So these are one of those toys that are basically like 
no stuffing it's just kind of the fabric so if they do rip it open there's no stuffing inside that they could um accidentally ingest or anything so these are kind of like a safe alternative to stuffed toys if you have a dog who tends to want to eat stuffing so there's this little floppy skunk and then we have this um rabbit toy here so again this is one that like doesn't have the stuffing inside but it does have like some crinkly stuff inside some dogs really like that some don't i will say i got a big variety of toys but i'm not i don't know what my dog's going to like like maybe she'll really like stuffed toys maybe she'll really like rope toys maybe she'll hate stuffed toys i don't know so you kind of have to like give them everything and then see what they like so i have a lot of stuff right now <laughs> then we have this elephant once again this is one of those like no stuffing toys which also has some like crinkly stuff inside i just thought that this was really cute so i got it then we have this sad cauliflower i don't I, I don't know why this exists but i love it so i had to buy it he looks so like angry or sad i don't really know but i thought that it was funny so i got this this is an amazing toy. Here, another toy, one of those no stuffing things. Hopefully my dog likes these because for some reason I got so many of them. Um, this one is a fox. This one's a little smaller than the other ones that I got. So there's that. Then we have this rabbit here. So this one does have stuffing in it and it's made out of a like canvasy material, which I thought was really cool. I don't know, I just really like this. It's like a really good quality. Like you can tell it's not like cheaply made. So. I'm hoping that my dog will like this. I don't know, I think it's really cute. <laughs> my cat is currently playing in the box down there. So there's this. These were something I found that I thought were really cool. So they're like a chew toy, but they're made out of like a suede. So it's very like natural. I've heard a lot of dogs really like chewing on this stuff. So I got this one, which is a rabbit. And then I also bought this one, which is like a squirrel. So I have both of these suede toys. I thought that they were super cool. So I wanted to get them. Then I have a few different leashes for like training purposes and stuff. So this one here is a two foot leash. So these are used for training often to encourage your dog to walk close to you because it's a very short leash. And then here we have a four foot leash. And then here we have a six foot leash. So a variety of different leashes, which can all be used depending on what you're looking for. And then I did also get a martingale collar. So these are a type of training collars you can see. So this is the part that goes around the dog's neck. And then this is where the leash um, connects. So if the dog pulls, this does tighten a little bit. It's not the same as a choke collar or a prong collar or anything like that. It, because it is very limited to how much it can um, tighten. So there is that. So these are typically, like I said, used as a training tool for teaching your dog how to walk on the leash. So there's that. And then I also ordered her a smaller one in case the bigger one is too big for her as a puppy. So I do have two sizes. There's the bigger one and the smaller one. Now I do have a few more things that I'm gonna go ahead and grab. So then I also got this like puzzle game thing. So these are really good for like stimulating their brains, getting them working. Very good enrichment for them to have to like problem solve in order to get the treats and stuff. So it's basically like, I don't know, it's basically like a treat thing. Like you put treats in and then they kind of have to problem solve in order to get the treat. So yeah, like I said, these are just really good for their brains, especially when they're growing. It really helps them to learn like problem solving skills. So I got this. Okay, now behind me, there's a lot of treats and grooming supplies, so we'll go through those now. So Sam White shed a lot, so grooming supplies are definitely important to have. I definitely still need to buy some more, but I do have a few right now. So I have this comb here. Just, I don't know if there's like technical names for these tools. I'm not like a dog groomer, so. I have this comb and then I have this comb which is really similar to this one except the like little teeth are closer together I guess. <laughs> and then I have this comb which this one's supposedly supposed to be really good for like long fur dogs because it has two different um, lengths I guess. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a comb expert. Then there is this one which kind of just looks like a regular hairbrush. Then I have these two brushes here. These are like the really like tiny one. This is more so for my cat so I'll put that away. Um, but this one I did get for the dog. Typically with Samoids you want to use like 
longer bristled brushes to really like get down to their, get through their fur. This is only really gonna brush the top layer, but this can be good if you, for some things, but like this shouldn't be like your main grooming tool. And then I also have nail clippers. Again, these are like the ones I mostly use for my cat. So then these ones will likely be the ones that I use on my dog. So that is what I have for grooming supplies so far. Oh, I also have dog shampoo, but that's upstairs. So I'm not gonna run upstairs to grab the shampoo because you probably don't care that much, but I also have dog shampoo. Okay, now treats, or actually let's do this first. Here I have some eco-friendly poop bags because you know, dogs are gonna poop and eco-friendly is nice, so environmentally friendly poop bag. Now onto the treats. I have a lot of them because treats are important when you have a puppy because they're a good tool for training. So I wanted to get a lot of treats. So these ones are kind of from like a small company back in Nova Scotia. So this one here is just dehydrated beef liver. This one here is just dehydrated beef with a little bit of honey. And then this one is just dehydrated beef lung. So then I have these two treats right here from the brand Posy. I just recently got these at a pet expo. I also wanna point out all of these treats that I have here are raw. So they are like raw treats. They're basically just like dehydrated, like it says right on there, like dehydrated raw treats. Um, so this one here is kangaroo liver. And then this one here is just kangaroo strip. And then here, these are just some dehydrated duck feet by the True Raw Choice brand. My cat wants attention, clearly. Hi, what do you want? And then I have these ones, which are just some beef lung again. So now I actually got these for free. They were just like kind of free with the purchase of something else that I made, so um, there's that. And then here I have a few different uh, Stella and Chewy's things. So these ones are the Game Bird recipe, and also I think my cat, <laughs> wants them yeah there she <laughs> these aren't your treats and then this one here is what is just like duck and then this one here is lamb hearts excuse me so yeah there is that that is everything that i got for my dog so far oh no that's not everything i also have a dog crate upstairs so we can go and take a look at that quickly to see the crate and the bed and stuff. So I still need to get a crate divider because right now it's like too big and you want a crate divider when it comes to like potty training a puppy, you want a crate divider. So I do need to get that. I don't have it yet, but I, I have plenty of time still. Hi. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the crate. So here's the dog crate. Um, like I mentioned, I do need to get a divider because this is a 48 inch long crate. It, it looks so much bigger in person than it does on camera, but it's a really big crate. I really like this one though because it does have the two doors, which is something I really like. So there's like the side door as well as the front door over here. So yeah, multiple different entryways. But anyways, there's the crate. Okay, so now that we looked at the crate, now I can say that we are done. So that is now everything that I've gotten for my dog so far. Obviously, I do still have a few more things that I need to get in order to prepare for her, but I have time. I'm not getting her for like two months still, so I would say I'm pretty well prepared for the most part, but you know, I do still have some more shopping that I'll need to do. But for the most part, I think I have quite a lot. I think I'm pretty prepared. So now that we are done with this, let's just go ahead and get right on into the discussion portion of this video. Now, before we really dive into this conversation, I want to say everything I'm saying here is strictly my opinion based off like my own personal experiences, my own research, just my feelings, all of that. This is my opinion. You're free to agree or disagree with me. Either one is fine. And now I also want to say that you guys are 100% free to leave your opinions, your thoughts down in the comments below. The only thing that I would ask is to please keep it respectful. I'm telling you now, people are going to disagree with you. No matter what your opinion is, I know people are going to disagree with me and that is fine. People are going to have different opinions. However, just because someone has a different opinion than you does not give you the right to be rude to them, to be condescending to them, anything like that. So please be respectful of other people who have different opinions than you and please try to have respectful conversations. I am going to be monitoring the comments on this video and I will be deleting any that I think are rude or harmful 
just putting that out there. You are 100% free to share your opinions, but just please do it in a respectful way. With that said, let's just go ahead and talk about why I'm personally choosing to buy my dog from a breeder and not a shelter. So I think to start out, I want to kind of talk about why I don't think all breeders are bad. So if you're looking at breeders, especially when it comes to dog breeders, you might come across the terms backyard breeders, reputable breeders, ethical breeders, puppy mills, things like that. So when it comes to all those, the only things that I really support are ethical breeders, responsible breeders, whatever you want to call them, reputable breeders. People have different names for them, but that is what I am personally in support of. I will start off by saying I am a firm supporter of reputable breeders, and this doesn't just apply to dogs, it applies to reptile breeders, mammal breeders, all sorts of things. I personally really admire the work that reputable breeders do. I think that they're incredibly important. I think that they play an important role in the pet trade, and honestly, I just very much support what they do. Now with that said, I also very much support what rescues do. You guys know my cat who I just adopted, she came from a shelter. I think that there are some great rescues, some great shelters out there. But however, I do think there are pros and cons no matter where you get your animal from, whether you're going to a reputable breeder or whether you're going to a shelter. So the reason why I am not a huge fan of the whole adopt, don't shop mentality, movement, whatever you wanna call it, is because I just don't think it's a black and white issue. As I just mentioned, I think that there are definitely pros and cons to going to a breeder versus going to a shelter. And for some people, the pros of one outweigh the cons. And you know, for some people, rescuing has more pros than cons, but then for other people, buying has more pros than cons. And I think it's incredibly important to do what is going to fit your lifestyle best, because if you are doing what's going to fit you best, it's also going to ensure that your dog has the best life possible or other animal. This can apply to reptiles, cats, whatever. So with that said, if you do choose to go to a dog breeder, I think that it is incredibly important to find a responsible, reputable breeders. Now there is such a thing as a backyard breeder. And now this is a term that I think a lot of people do use too loosely, but unfortunately I do think a lot of them exist. So now the difference between a reputable breeder and a backyard breeder is very, very obvious if you know what to look for. So if you come across someone who is breeding dogs, there are things you can look for to see, are they doing it responsibly? or is this a backyard breeding situation? So let's talk about what a responsible breeder does. So in my opinion, responsible breeders are incredibly important because I think that they just do very important work. Now a responsible breeder is breeding for a goal, they're breeding for a purpose, and usually their goals and purposes, sorry my light just fell over, but I actually kinda like this lighting better. <laughs> So a lot of the time, a responsible breeder is going to be breeding for a goal or a purpose, something along those lines. And now it's really important to look at what that is. Typically, responsible breeders are going to be trying to breed the healthiest dogs possible. Now this is something people point out a lot. They say, oh, but purebreds have all these health issues. Like, this is why you should get a mixed dog. And while it is true that a lot of purebreds have issues, it cannot be applied to all of them. There are some purebred dogs out there who have very little issues and thanks to responsible breeders, they're making sure that these dogs remain the healthiest they possibly can be. Now responsible breeders are also going to be breeding for temperament. So a responsible breeder is going to make sure that their dogs that they're breeding are extremely well tempered in order to make sure that the puppies that they're producing are going to be overall good dogs are going to be well tempered have minimal behavioral issues and that is typically one of the goals of breeders now a responsible breeder is also going to breed for the goal of being able to provide people with you know their lifetime companion or maybe the show dog they're looking for or maybe the service dog they need there are plenty 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 of reasons why a 
why a responsible breeder is going to be breeding their dogs, but typically it is to continue producing the best of the best. In my opinion, if a breeder is producing dogs that have known health issues, known behavioral issues, to me, that is not responsible breeding. In my opinion, I don't think you can responsibly breed an animal that has so many genetic issues that affect its quality of life. Now, if you compare what a reputable breeder is breeding for versus a backyard breeder, it's going to be very clear. Now, a backyard breeder typically has very little concern for possible future health issues. Um, they don't have any concern for preserving a breed. They don't have any concern for producing well-tempered dogs. A lot of the time, backyard breeders are just simply breeding because they can and they can make money from it. Now, a big, big difference between reputable breeders and backyard breeders is also going to be how do they treat you and their puppies after they go home with their new owner. Now, typically if you get your dog from a reputable breeder, they're going to offer you a lifetime of support. They're going to be there for you no matter what. You can always call, email, contact, visit them with any sort of questions or concerns that you have, which can be a great support system, especially for new dog owners. When it comes to a backyard breeder, they're very much not likely going to give you that. A backyard breeder will probably sell you your puppy and then never contact you ever again. Because the truth is they honestly just don't have that much of concern for the dogs after they're sold. Their goal was to sell them, to make money, and then probably to breed again. Whereas when you go to a reputable breeder, a lot of times their goal is to create almost like a sense of a family. And they just really, really try their best to make sure that everyone who has bought one of their dogs has an amazing support network behind them. Something to look for if you're looking into dog breeders would be an application. Now, almost every reputable breeder is going to make you fill out an application in order to be approved to get one of their dogs. Now, for example, when you see someone selling a litter of puppies on Kijiji or Craigslist, they're hardly ever going to ask you to fill out an application. They might ask you a few questions, but a lot of the times they will just say, yep, come and pick up whichever puppy you want and you can take it home if you give me $1,000. That's not very responsible, unfortunately. Now, I will talk more about my personal experience in a bit, but I just want to put it out there. A responsible breeder will typically get you to fill out an application to get to know you, your personality, your lifestyle, what you're looking for in a dog, what other pets you have, all sorts of things in order to make sure that their dogs are going to the best owners possible because a responsible breeder isn't just going to sell to anyone who's willing to give them the money. They're only going to sell to someone who they know is willing to provide this dog with the best care possible. Now, typically, if you go to a reputable breeder, after you go through the process of filling out an application, there's usually going to be a wait period. And now this isn't always a guarantee because a lot of the time, you know, it depends where you live. It depends depends what breed of dog you're looking for and just how high the demand is for that specific breed. For example, if you're looking into a less common breed that doesn't have as much of a demand, there will probably be a shorter wait time than a more common breed that does have a high demand just because there are simply less people looking for that breed. So a shorter wait time doesn't necessarily mean it's a backyard breeding situation depending on all of the other factors. However, when you come across those posts on Kijiji and Craigslist that are like, eight puppies ready to go in three weeks or two weeks, one week, ready to go now, ready to go for Christmas, all sorts of things, that is a red flag because that most likely means, you know, this breeder doesn't have a wait list of people waiting to get a puppy from them. This breeder is not really screening people beforehand. They're kind of just looking to sell the puppies as soon as they can. Now, another big thing to look out for is the cost. Now, the cost of a dog is typically going to directly reflect the breeding. If you're going to a reputable breeder, the cost of their animals is typically going to be higher than those people who are backyard breeding the same breed. So you might find one dog for $500, 
on Kijiji, but then if you find a breeder for that same dog, it could be $1,500. And while it can be tempting to go with the cheaper one, the cost does directly reflect the quality of breeding, the quality of breeder, and the quality of dog that you're getting. Another big difference between a reputable breeder and a backyard breeder would be contract. This is something a lot of people don't know about, but a reputable breeder should actually be offering contracts to the people buying their puppies. And now a lot of people don't even know this is a thing, you know, like a lot of people who have only adopted dogs or who have only gone to backyard breeders before don't know that a good breeder should be giving you a contract. Now, typically there's going to be multiple contracts involved with the dogs. I would say one of the most standard ones would be a spay and neuter contract. So with a responsible breeder, they will typically, you know, depending on what you want the dog for, they're going to give you some type of spay or neuter contract. Now, if you are looking for a dog to breed or a dog to show, you might have a contract saying that this dog won't be spayed or won't be neutered, at least until they're done breeding or showing or something like that. Then if you're looking for a pet only dog, typically the contract is going to say that the dog should be spayed or neutered sometime after 18 months of age. It could depend on the breed and the particular breeder and what their preferences are, but I found a pretty standard contract is saying that they must be spayed or neutered once they are 18 months of age or two years for some breed. And now these contracts are legally binding, so if you as the owner fail to abide to them, you could get in legal trouble for that. Now another very common contract with responsible breeders that a lot of people don't know about is the fact that you have a contract that says at no point you can never put this dog in a shelter, you can never sell it, you can never give it to someone. If for whatever reason you cannot take care of this dog, it has to go right back to the breeder. And that is one of the biggest differences between a responsible breeder and a backyard breeder. And one of the biggest reasons why responsible breeders do not add to the overpopulation issue of animals and backyard breeders do. A responsible breeder will never let their dog end up homeless. They will never let their dogs end up in a shelter. They will never let their dogs be abandoned in any sort of way. If you, as the owner, for whatever reason, cannot take care of your dog anymore, that dog is sent right back to the breeder where they will either keep it themselves or find it a new loving home. Whereas if you go to a backyard breeder, they are never going to offer this. If you buy a dog from a backyard breeder and for whatever reason you cannot care for it anymore, that dog is either going to end up being rehomed, it's going to end up in a shelter, and unfortunately sometimes they end up dumped on the street. This is one of the biggest differences and this is why I will constantly say that responsible breeders do not add to overpopulation. Responsible breeders are continuously fighting against overpopulation by doing the best they possibly can to prevent dogs from ending up in shelters. In an ideal world, if only responsible breeders existed and there was no such thing as backyard breeders, shelters would very likely not even exist because the breeders and the responsibility that they take on prevent dogs from ending up in shelters. Unfortunately, that is not the world that we live in because the world is so full of irresponsible breeders and puppy mills, which is super unfortunate, but unfortunately it's just the way that it is. So that's another thing that I wanted to touch on because a lot of people do not understand the fact that responsible breeders do not contribute to overpopulation and instead they actively fight against it. Now responsible breeders advocate for being responsible pet owners. And that is the difference between a responsible breeder and an irresponsible breeder. Irresponsible breeders aren't going to advocate for responsible pet ownership because they are not responsible people themselves. If a certain dog breeder lets their dogs end up in a shelter or homeless or rehomed, that is what's adding to the overpopulation issue. People who are letting their dogs have accidental litters because they either didn't spay or neuter them or don't know how to control them if they're unfixed, that is what's causing the overpopulation issue. Responsible breeders who will always make sure their dogs have a home are not what is contributing to the overpopulation issue. So those are just some of the reasons why I personally support 
responsible breeders. I think that they do amazing work when it comes to making sure that they are breeding healthy dogs, when they're preserving the breed, when they're breeding dogs with good temperaments and have been health tested and genetic tested and all sorts of things, I think that they do amazing things. And I also do think that they do amazing things when it comes to advocating for responsible breeding, advocating for responsible pet ownership, advocating for less dogs ending up in shelters, less dogs being homeless, and instead advocating for dogs going to the best owners possible and always having a home and always being loved and always having a support system. So overall, that is some of the reasons why I personally do support responsible breeders. Now let's talk about shelters a bit because <laughs> I don't want people to think that I'm against shelters or hate shelters or hate adopting animals or something like that because that is definitely far from the truth. As you guys know, I have a lot of adopted, rescued, rehomed animals myself, whether it be reptiles, rabbits, um, my cat, for example, all of that. I have my cat who came from a shelter, my rabbit who came from a shelter, I have other animals who I've rescued, taken in and surrendered all sorts of things so I think it's pretty obvious I'm not against like shelters or anything like that. I've donated to shelters, I volunteer at shelters, I think that they do amazing work as well. So just because I support breeders doesn't mean I also can't support shelters because I think a lot of people get that mixed up and they think if someone's for breeders it means that they're against shelters which at least for me isn't the case. So I think animal shelters do very important work by you know taking in the animals who for whatever reason don't have a home anymore and trying to find them a good home and making sure that the animals are healthy. For example any at least with the shelters that I have seen before obviously I can't speak for every single shelter but for the good shelters they will make Make sure that their animals are spayed and neutered before they're adopted out. They will make sure their animals are up to date with their vaccinations. They will make sure the animals don't have, you know, any illnesses that need to be treated before they're adopted out. All sorts of things like that. However, I just don't think shelter animals are for everyone, at least at every point in their life. And that is kind of one of the reasons why I decided to go with a breeder over a shelter. So let's talk about that a little bit more. So one of the reasons that I decided to go to a breeder rather than go to a shelter for my first dog is I really, really want to make sure that I end up with a dog whose personality matches mine and just suits all of my needs and wants and everything in a dog. So let's talk about kind of what I was looking for in a dog. So the first thing I knew that I wanted was a medium to larger sized dog. I prefer bigger dogs over little dogs. That's just a personal preference. You know, that's just me. I knew for my first dog, I wanted a medium to large sized dog, probably in the range of like 30 to 60 pounds, I would say. And now I knew I also wanted a dog that could tolerate really cold weather. For those of you who don't know, I live in Ottawa, Canada, and Ottawa has some very extreme weather, especially in the winter time. Now, Ottawa in the winter time can sometimes get down to negative 40, and now that is Celsius and Fahrenheit. Negative 40 is actually the meeting point of Celsius and Fahrenheit, so it's the same in both. So yeah. It can get down to negative 40 here in the winter times, which is quite cold and it also snows a lot. You know, I've, it's already been snowing quite a bit. It's only November, but it can snow a lot in the winter and get really cold is what I'm trying to say. So I knew with that I wanted a dog who could tolerate cold temperatures because I didn't want to end up with a dog who would be stuck inside for six months of the year. Back at my mom's house, like growing up, we have a lab Amstaff mix and he has really short fur and he will only go outside like to pee quickly and then runs back in. I didn't want that personally. I want my dog to be able to enjoy going outside. I wanna be able to take my dog on walks in the winter. I don't want my dog to feel like they're stuck inside because they're cold. So something else I wanted in my dog was a breed that tends to be very friendly open to new people you know i didn't want a breed that is known for being very like protective over its owners because sometimes they can be a little bit intimidating if you have like guests coming in the house i personally wanted a dog who would be very friendly and hopefully open to like new people like meeting new people like meeting new dogs and stuff like that 
Another need for me, and this is like a very important need, was I'm hoping for a breed that typically does well with other animals because as you guys know, I have a cat and I also have a ton of other animals such as reptiles, rabbits, amphibians, and all of that downstairs. Now that isn't a huge concern for me because personally I don't plan on letting my dog or cat interact with any of those animals. So all of my other animals are down on the bottom floor of my house and my dog or cat will never have access there. I don't even want them to know that part of the house exists. But in the case that an accident happens and my dog does happen to get downstairs, I don't want like a disaster to happen, hopefully. Like I said, I don't plan on letting them down there anyways, but just in the case of an accident, I want to make sure, you know, things are probably fine. Another big thing for me was trainability. And this one is really important to me because when it comes to owning a dog, training for me is something really important and it's something I really want to heavily focus on. I really want a dog that enjoys training. I like a I want a dog that's intelligent and responds to training well, which, you know, some breeds are just better suited for that than others. I mean, I think you really can train any dog out there, but some respond to it better than others, just based off the way that they were bred and what's in their instincts. So I really, really wanted a dog that responds to training and enjoys training. Another thing that I wanted was a medium to high energy dog. Now I find for me working from home for the most part, I live a fairly like stationary life and it's not something that I personally enjoy. I honestly love going outside. I love like going for walks and everything like that. But the way that my life has been the past two years, I kind of just don't have a reason to. Like I don't have a reason to go outside and go for a walk. Like I guess I could just go if I wanted to, but I honestly kind of find it boring just going for a random walk by myself. So I really wanted to get a dog that was medium to high energy so that I would have to take them on walks every day and I would be able to enjoy it with them and I would be able to spend a lot of time with them and play with them and everything like that. Another thing, as someone who does primarily work from home, I did want a breed that enjoys a lot of company because now there are some dogs who are known as like Velcro dogs who basically love being by their owner's side constantly and then there are other dogs who prefer a little more independence. I wanted a dog that would enjoy a lot of company because I am home so often. Um, there are a few days where I work outside of the house and obviously I run errands and stuff, but compared to most people, I work from home quite a lot. So I wanted an animal who would enjoy that. And now for me as a first time dog owner, so I have had dogs like growing up with my family, but I never really took care of them. I simply kind of just like existed in the house with them. Like I didn't feed them or train them or walk them. I was like 12 or something when we got my first dog. So, I still consider myself a first time dog owner. I really honestly just want the full experience of raising a puppy, training a puppy, and just really creating a strong bond with my dog. And to me that it was something I just really wanted to experience. I just really want to make sure that I'm getting a dog that is the right fit for me, who I can work with and spend time with and enjoy and bond with. That's something that I really, really want. So with all of those those specific needs and wants that I had, I started looking into different dog breeds to try to figure out which would be a good fit for me. And then after looking into different dog breeds for a while, I've kind of narrowed it. Now, after looking into different dog breeds for a while, I narrowed it down to Golden Retrievers and Samoids. And ultimately, I ended up deciding that I wanted to go with a Samoid. I still absolutely love Golden Retrievers, and I think I would like to own one someday. But for my first one, I decided on a Samoid. Now, after deciding on a breed, that does kind of bring up the question, well, why did you decide to go to a breeder rather than a dog? And basically the biggest reason for me was the fact that 
a breeder will provide me with a lifetime support. That's a really important thing to me as a first time dog owner. Um, I'm sure as a first time dog owner, I'm going to have a lot of questions and I'm going to need help with some things because that's just part of, you know, doing something for the first time and learning. And the fact that I'll have the breeders who I can turn to whenever I have a question or concern is really important to me. Just having that support is important to me and it definitely alleviates some anxiety that can come with owning a new dog and it really is comforting in a way knowing that I have that support. Another reason is I just really really wanted to make sure that my first dog experience is a good one. Now I will be honest when I was growing up we had a German Shepherd puppy who we got when I was 12 and then when I was around 14 I believe we got a lab Amsterdam staff mix and he came from the shelter he was a rescue and for the first few months that we had him it was not at all a good experience and now i do want to start off by saying i understand that not all shelter dogs are like this so i do not want to group them all together i know that there are shelter dogs that are wonderful and amazing but we had ours who was so misbehaved he was actually scheduled to be euthanized right before we got him because he had been adopted and returned like three other times due to his behavioral issues um the first day that we got him i remember i walked in the house and he ran up to me and just bit me in the leg uh, tore right through my clothes and everything like literally ripped my whole skirt off of my body um, and there was just a lot that went on after that um, as of now he is so much better he's a great dog I will say that but it just took a lot of work a lot of effort and there was a lot of struggles to um, get him to where he is now and for me as a first-time dog owner that's just not something I am willing to put myself through right now. I feel like if I were to end up in that situation, it just wouldn't be fair to me. It wouldn't be fair to my dog. It wouldn't be fair to my other animals, to other people in this house. So as a first time dog owner, I just really want to make sure that my dog is a good fit for me and that I have a good experience. And that is another reason why I chose to go to a breeder. Because one thing, when you go to a breeder, a reputable breeder is they don't let you pick which puppy you want they don't let you say oh that one's the cutest i want this one they raise all their puppies and they get to know each and every one of them and then they evaluate them and match the puppy to the owner to make sure everyone is getting the best fit so for example if there's someone who wants one that's a little bit more laid back and then there's someone who wants one that's a little bit more energetic they will match those dogs to the right person to make sure they're getting the right fit for them and that's something that's personally really important to me so for me going to a breeder for my first dog was never about getting like a fancy designer dog or anything like that for me it was about making sure that I end up with a dog who's going to suit my lifestyle and that I end up with a dog who I can provide for and give everything to it and just give it the best life possible because I don't know I think taking on a dog is a huge responsibility and i think for especially a first-time dog owner there can be a lot of anxiety involved in it um a lot of questions you know a lot of learning and to me because of all of that i just really didn't feel like going to a shelter was the right fit for me and i think making sure and i think doing what i know is right for me is going to be really important I would love to adopt a dog from the shelter in the future once I have more experience and I'm not a first time dog owner and I have experience training a dog and raising a dog and all sorts of things. I would love to have the experience of getting a dog from a shelter. I just don't think it's the right fit for me for my first dog, me as a first time dog owner. I will be honest, I just don't think it's the right fit for me. I really, really want the support network that I would get from going to a reputable breeder. I really want that guarantee of knowing that I'm getting a puppy who is best suited to me and my needs and my lifestyle because I feel like if 
I'm getting matched with the right puppy. I feel so much more confident that I'm going to be able to give it the best life possible because I would never ever want to get a dog and then feel like I'm not giving it the best life possible. So hopefully that makes sense. I know this video was kind of rambly, but I just really wanted to talk about this and I don't script any of my videos, so that was that. So basically that's why I'm kind of just not a huge fan of the whole adopt don't shop movement, mentality, whatever you wanna call it, because I think it really ignores the people who are really just trying to do what is best for them and their dog and maybe have some worries about going to a shelter for their first time. Again, I wanna point out, I have absolutely nothing against shelters. I think that they do amazing work. I, If you are someone who supports shelter dogs, I all to you, like all the power to you. I really just don't feel like it would have been the right fit for my first dog. That is really as simple as it is. I, I don't know, I have anxiety about being a first time dog owner. And it's not like a bad anxiety, like, oh, I shouldn't do this. Like, oh, I shouldn't do this. Like, why am I doing this? I would say it's like a healthy anxiety where I'm just concerned for the well being of my dog and I want to make sure that they have the best life possible. To me, it's kind of like a healthy anxiety. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm getting off track, but. Anyways, I feel like I'm at a good place to end. This video was so long, I know, I apologize. Hopefully you guys still enjoyed watching it. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to like and subscribe. I would appreciate a lot. Again, feel free to leave your comments down below. I'm more than happy to hear your opinions. Even if it doesn't agree with me, that's completely fine. Like I said, please just be respectful. Be respectful to yourself, to myself, to others. Please don't start fights. Don't be mean. I will be monitoring comments. So all of that said, thank you guys for watching. I hope that this video was helpful to some people. Don't really have anything else to say. Check out my social media if you want to. So all that said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you all next time.